I, of course, had planned to wear it as a hat. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Our last stop here in our lovely Ohio summer <laughs> is at the huge antique mall in Marietta. This place is immense, but I hear it's good. I even have some room in the back of the van because sales were very brisk at the Fenton Convention and even though a lot of it was online and we have to ship it, we sold a lot of large items to people who came in person. So if I see something, I actually can fit it in the car. Here it is. It looks like an old brick factory building that is now Antique Mall of Marietta. We're going to go in and have a look. The first thing I notice before we even get in the door is that this yoke is under $100. Now it's a little damaged on the left side, but a lot of people are hanging these in the middle of great rooms and turning them into mounts for chandeliers and things. And that price, uh, I've sold that same piece in Seattle for about three times that much. Well, there are a whole lot of rooms in this place. There's gonna be a lot to see and we'll try to pick out some highlights. It looks like there's a lot of fun variety. I just sold this lamp in the custard glass. We're going to see a lot of Fenton in here, of course, because it was made right here. But a whole lot of things were made in Ohio. Depression glass, elegant glass, McCoy pottery. Ohio was a huge manufacturing center in its prime. There's still a lot of manufacturing in Ohio, but not a lot of housewares having moved offshore primarily. The sympathetic ear. This is a cute pair of salt and pepper shakers. We don't see these too often. If you must argue when you eat here is a sympathetic ear so that way if everyone else at the table is yelling at you this person is listening and of course west virginia along the ohio river had a lot of manufacturing too these are acro agate children's dishes from the 1930s you see the jadeite here and this very happy bright delphite blue and of course blanco glass is from the other end of west virginia so we've got a lot of the big heavy players in the glass industry represented here because so much of it was made in this general area. Marietta was also a shipbuilding town. I was in the gun room, the restaurant at the Lafayette Hotel where we were staying and they had ship wheels as decoration all over the place. That was built in the 1940s. Ship's wheels today are fairly expensive. This one's 365 and that is about the price they sell for to the right person in a decorator market. Neat old Knickerbocker beer sign. Rupert Beer was the maker and Knickerbocker was the brand name. This is priced at 150. There's just not a lot of inexpensive bar lights anymore. People really love this category now. The glass sign from an old gas pump is Mobile Gas Special. It's $75. It'd be even more if it had Pegasus on it. They call this a girl lamp statue. This is a piece of spelterware and yes, it was made to be a lamp because you have the hole in the back for the tube to run up and then the lamp would have been over her head. She's very pretty. She's only $48 for a piece of 1910 spelterware. That's a rather good price. I want to show these arches because these are appearing all over the place and new corbels too. Perfectly nice for decorating. Don't be fooled into thinking these are old. An old corbel is going to show signs of having been used and the paint's going to be worn more in some places than the other. You might even have a little bit of dry rot in an old piece that you have to spray in order to use it again. These show none of that. Here's an original Coca-Cola cooler, a vintage one priced at $185. And in that condition with all the original straps and buckles, that seems to be about where they're pricing these days. I like this vanity set. These were very popular in the 1930s, little travel sets that people could take with them. People were starting to travel by car more. And this one's got nice brown celluloid and all of its original pieces. So you have your dresser jar, your little rouge and makeup pots, your button hook, your cuticle file, and a buffing tool. And this is $48. I think it's very cute and most people display these open like this because it's fun to see the contents. The speckled blue is a harder color of enamel wear to find. This is an old piece. You can tell it's got some chips and wear but it's also nice and heavy compared to a newer piece. This one in this condition is priced at $68.50. It's on the large side. 
Kanawha, some pilgrim glass in here, a lot of the different crackle ewers from various West Virginia and Ohio River based companies. Okay, this guy has just the cutest, silliest face. And this base looks to me like an American bisque. It's a seal planter from the 1950s and it is $9. Now next to it are another pair of dogs. I want to pick these up and show you. Notice the sort of medium tan color of this. That's because the clay and the glazes are done in Brazil. This is a 1990s era piece. So don't be mistaken for thinking that this is vintage. You can tell that it's not from the USA because that clay base is different than what we have in this country. Here's a bunch of Metlocks pottery from California, the Green Rooster Provincial, and these are some harder to find pieces, particularly this cruet set. Almost reminds you of the old caster sets from the Victorian era, but this would have been oil, vinegar, salt, and pepper, and the mustard or jam pot that sat in this wooden bale, and you can tell they were made for it because they have these indentations. So this was something that was done deliberately from the factory, not aftermarket. They have it priced at 120, but it is really a scarce piece in the line. The salt box here, $35. The little jug here that could have been used as a honey pot. That one I don't see a price tag on. The divided vegetable, $20. These prices are pretty realistic. We're in the part of the country where a lot of old houses and old businesses have been taken down and because of that we see architectural remnants around like these floor grate covers from about 1900 made of cast iron. These are really fun to repurpose into other things because they've got great design and it might take a little bit of creativity to figure out how to use them. I've even seen artists use them as a stencil for airbrushing. We also th see things like these old school clocks. Now, these are standard clocks, and I think they're great looking, and the only thing to know about these is whether it's the master or the slave. This one has a 1963 date on the back. And when I say master or slave, in schools, they would have one central clock, the one the principal controlled, they would make sure that one was set, and all the other clocks ran connected to that so that they would keep the same time and so those clocks may or may not be able to be wired to run independently. Okay, well this is a lampshade that originally would have had glass jewels coming out of it from about 1900, 1910. That's a pretty neat piece. If you were restoring an old lamp, you'd have to figure out how to get the jewels, but that's a nice shade to start with. And then this, I wanted to pick up and wear as a hat, but it is actually made as a shield. Now this is a decorative piece from Asia. This one's priced at $95. Bronze memorial plaques usually stay where they belong unless they're replaced, so they don't come up very often. This one's priced at $225. Now condition matters for prices, but people will buy older matchboxes, even worn, because they're getting pretty hard to find. I had a friend who collected these when we were kids and he was probably the first kid I knew who insisted that his parents buy him one that he could leave in the box and then if they bought him a duplicate then he would take that out and play with it and I'm sure he still has that collection and he was smart because it's worth a ton of money now. Wow, this place is really truly vast. I don't know if they have upper floors open too, it's a lot of stuff as it is regardless. And if you have a really narrow space, just put a whole lot of signs and oil cans and things like that in it. And believe me, guys will walk into this. You can say, oh, this isn't great display, but for a certain type of collector, this is the right display. This is a Gulf Nonax sign, and this is an original one. Priced at about 170. They have this one marked Viking question mark, but Viking did molded pieces, and this is hand blown. This is actually a Blinko piece. It's got the pontel on the bottom, and you can see, I talk a lot about if something doesn't seem like it has normal wear, be careful of reproductions. Well, look at the wear on this. This is normal wear. It got pushed around a little bit. They'd dust the furniture and move it around. They'd move it back. 
it's got just a little bit of wear that you can see that's visible. This is 50 years old. It should have that. Blue Mountain Pottery and a whole set of left and rose dinnerware. They called this Heritage Green when they came out with the pattern. There are a lot of variations of ring pattern from the 1920s and 30s. It was one of the first depression glass patterns with a fired on color. I like the shape of this picture. I haven't seen this shape before. Anchor Hawking made a lot of this. I think some other companies did ring as well. It used to be a lot more plentiful, but a lot of people dishwashed it until it didn't look good anymore. This one is priced at $29.75. Here's a beer tray that isn't from this part of the country, so maybe we'll be lucky and it'll be a cheap price. Well, $35. Not cheap, but cool. If you were from Duluth, that would be a reasonable collector price. Next to it, we have this dog biscuit jar. This is right out of Japan. It's a dog biscuit jar shaped like a fire hydrant. How appropriate. And it is $26. That's pretty cute. You see on the bottom here, it has the Fred Roberts Company label. That was an importer out of San Francisco. No loitering, private property, signed. And then you, they actually would not glaze this part, so you could put your name there, and you will see people, usually in pen, who filled those things out on these old jars. That's a pretty cute piece that you really don't see. And it's very specific, and with all the pet lovers nowadays, even though this is from about 1965 or 70, I wonder if this might sell for more now. I said there was a bunch of Fenton glass in here, but one of the really hard pieces to find is the ruby with the white crest. This one is priced at $45, and for that piece, that's not a bad price. You do not see the ruby much at all. The fairy lamp next to it is $58.75 with the cranberry. That's not a bad price either. And then behind is the Rosaline. George Fenton told me that they couldn't wait to take the Rosaline out of production because the color, the chemicals they use just killed their kilns. And then this is West Virginia glass. We know them the most for Blendo glass, but they did crackle and other pieces too. This set is priced $129. It's never been used. It's got all the original West Virginia glass labels on them in the shape of the state. These slag glass pieces were by Imperial Glass from the 1960s. They were also out of Ohio. There's another piece of West Virginia glass. This one is for Stonewall Jackson, which was actually the dam in Weston, West Virginia. So that's a commemorative from there. And then here's a Rosaline footed bowl for $47.75. Some vintage and antiquarian books here with 30% off. This one might be interesting for a Civil War collector. The War of the Rebellion, official records of the Union and Confederate armies. And this talks about the campaigns in northern Alabama, Middle Tennessee, everywhere really. It looks like it's a very part of a very thorough grouping. Let's see when this was done. 1891. There's a bunch of Fenton that glows. So you've got the coin dot lemonade set priced at 325. That's about right for that. I like this yellow green Vaseline in the hobnail in the swung base. You really don't see that very often. And that one is priced at 199, but it is a scarce piece. The big fan is one and a quarter. And I've always been a fan of their cranberry striped decanter from about 1965. Oh gosh, I wish this was a little like, less expensive because somebody on YouTube would love this. This will glow under a black light as well. It's Burmese, but it's got that really interesting optic, almost like a spotlight is shining on it. And the painting priced at 165. In this market, that's probably a pretty reasonable price. Iron City Beer. This one has a little more heft. This is from Pittsburgh. This is an original one from probably the 1960s, priced at $36 with the discount. This is Photo Magazine from 1938, talking about how a Popeye feature is made, along with American Superstitions, Coaching a Dog Star, Tests for Duncan Drivers and Mysteries of Seahorses. I have to say this whole magazine just looks peculiar and fun. It's $4. I love the sideways photo of the women laying on the floor with their legs up like they're the Rockettes or something. <laughs> That's very cute. 
These joke books were definitely the province of the male world around 1969 when this came out. It says Parts and Pups Joke Book, and it was from here in Marietta given out as a premium. Some of the women are wearing less than this, so that's why I say it was very male oriented. And the jokes, as you see on the left, were as well. This is only $1.50. This tells you something about us being a nation of immigrants. This is an almanac. This is Welsh, and yet it was published in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1872 because so many folks are moving to the United States from places in Europe. So they had to be able to still speak in their original language. It took a while to learn English. And this was given out by a local doctor in Marietta. These have been here a long time. They're kind of folded over, and that's the sort of thing I look for in a place that's been around a while, the forgotten items. So let's see what these are. They appear to be a set of prints. It's $25 for all, and they look rather modernist. R.D. Runyon is the artist, so let's see what they look like and find out about R.D. Runyon if we can. That's an interesting silhouette. These are done in 1977, at least this one was. They seem like they might have some potential. Well, we looked into R.D. Runyon, couldn't find any information. Uh, but if you're looking for more information from me, please do subscribe if you haven't already, because it doesn't cost anything, and then you can click the bell to be notified of future videos, where we'll try to give you all sorts of interesting information about the antique and vintage world. Now here is the male version of the travel kit with the mirror and a file and a comb and a really neat case in celluloid with the stag on the top. So this was the male version and you notice this is older than the women's version. Men and women did not travel together in the same train car, they had separate lounges and women in general were not really encouraged to travel all that much or by themselves until the mid 20th century. This is priced at 100. And there's some cute pink pigs here. I have not actually seen the little bank before. I have seen the Boston baked beans, but not with the Bunker Hill label. And look at the one with the camera. Now these are old school prices. They are priced in the 95 and up range. And I don't think they usually go for that much anymore, but they are doing 20% off. They've got a postcard dealer who's got a lot of fun stuff from all over the place. And then they also have some really cute things like these little handkerchiefs. Look at that one with the gal on there. That's very sweet. They're about $3 each. Here's one of these 1960s TV tray sets. These are $50. They look like they're in good shape, maybe early 70s with that Harvest Gold and the Flower Power. And that's actually not a bad price. People are having trouble finding these now. It used to be every estate sale had one, and now they've kind of gone by the by. And with a lot of people living in smaller quarters these days, they're a handy thing to have. And here's another vanity set. This one is $150. There's even a back room here. And they do have a couple of spaces full of tools. They're not organized in a way where I can really pick things out and show you individually, but I will show you this. Because this one, with an 1888 patent date, is a very elaborate Piece. And this looks like it is some sort of a grinding wheel, but it's very heavily geared and it moves with. So there had to be some very specific industrial purpose for this. I wish I understood it better. I can only show you how it works. Neat old bagatelle game here. This one is a baseball related one. So this is American made by Northwestern Products of St. Louis, Missouri. Not exactly Northwestern, but okay. Five games in one. This was the precursor of today's video game. It's only $27. That's actually pretty reasonable, and it's even got its original marble taped up here. And this one recently sold for 
I think I'm going to pick this up. I haven't had one in a long time, and it's just fun graphically, and people love old toys. We just have to make sure the spring still works on the pusher. And it sure does. I just pulled it back, and it sprung right back into place. So this is a take me home with you. They were called push em ups by a lot of people, and in fact, if you go to eBay, it's the easiest way to look them up. A lot of people don't know the term bagatelle. I have to say the prices in this space are pretty inexpensive. This is only $5. I believe this to be Italian. It doesn't say on the bottom, but it has the appearance, the way it's painted. Next to it, we have this cute piece, which is an old thermometer from the 30s, souvenir of Marietta, Ohio. Whether it's cold or whether it's hot, we gotta have weather, whether or not. And that's true because it is hot and steamy after the rain here today. That is very cute, and I think I'll get it as a little souvenir from my visit to Marietta. This is sure an odd little toy. It looks like something that somebody took pieces and put together themselves. Maybe they just had a little buckboard, but they've got an elephant, of all things, driving this crazy car with a pine cone on the front. I'm not even sure if this is lichen or what material they've used. It's so odd and really kind of fun, and oh, the wheel even turns. It is priced at $17.50. I mean, this is folk art. Will someone else buy this and think it's curious and interesting for $35? I don't know, but I think I might take a try because I just think it's really peculiar and kind of neat. This guy appears to be having a heart attack. They have this listed as a freehand painted jug, $9. This is actually by Ransford Pottery out of Indiana, and they did do this free painting on their pieces, but these were commercially made. They often lose the paint because it was cold painted on, it isn't really fired in, and this one has lost a little. I still think in the right place that would be perfectly acceptable for someone and a good price. This is an old piece of elegant glass, but this seems very inexpensive for what it is. This is Cambridge glass, also from Ohio. I stayed in Cambridge on my way here. It's about an hour north. This nice honey amber color, and then you open it up and it's for the dresser. Again, you'd have a rouge pot, a dresser box, maybe some files. But you also could have used this for an inkwell and other office implements. So they had double duty, and they have patent applied for on it. At $12.50, again, I think this is a rather interesting piece you don't see often. It seems to be in good shape. I think it's rather attractive and just something a little different, so I think I'm going to take that. In the 1950s, Thomas Toy was one of the first to do all plastic toys. It has rather an English lorry look to it, but it's a mobile searchlight priced at $77.50. And they were wired up so the light would have actually worked in the back. I don't know if you can put a battery in now and make it work or not. And this is a promotional car, a 1955 Pontiac. And the only problem with it is it's warped a little bit so that there's separation between the bumper. These plastics, some of the ones, especially the 50s era, would warp in heat, like if they were stored in an attic after the kid moved out of the house. It is the Johan models out of Detroit. That's the one you want to look for. It's a shame that it's got that little bit of warpage because at $22.50, this would have been a buy. This is one you don't see so often and the rest of it's in fairly good shape. Here is a peacock silhouette. This might be hand done from the 1930s. You notice that it's a little more imprecise. It doesn't look like one that was done by a factory. It's only $3? Am I reading that right? That seems impossible. I'll take it for that price. It's rather on the large side. And yes, you can see that somebody, oh, it even says who, July of 1939, Joan Churchman made this on the back of a lobby card that looks like it was quite a lurid story. If you were a kid in the 50s or 60s with a train set, your supermarket might have looked like one of these little ones that used to be in the small towns. This is $7. I'll bet it's a Plastic Bill USA. That's one of the companies in particular that made a lot. This is a Plastic Bill piece. This is the house. Game calls can vary a lot in intricacy, materials, and value, but there's two in a box for only $8. This one is a fox call. I'm not sure why that would bring a fox. That must be the sound of something foxes like to eat. I know they like chicken. And then this one, I'm not sure what this is. It's actually very unclear to me. It looks like it might be a piece of something else. So there's what was originally in the box. And if you saw a call like this, this would definitely be worth buying for $8, especially with the box. We got an old Barbie with the blonde wig that came off. This would have been a set that had a bunch of different wigs. 
Unfortunately, if they're not stored right, the metal in their earrings will cause greening to the vinyl in the ears, and that is very difficult and perhaps impossible to remove. So we have to leave her behind, I'm afraid. What else do they have in here? This dealer, is, their prices are very low for what they have. This thermometer, the Trilon and Perisphere, it's a little exaggerated, but it does say New York right on the front. So this looks like it was legitimately from the fair and it's only $6 in Bakelite. However, I see the thermometer doesn't really work properly. There's a gap in there, which means that the fluid is not working correctly. Darn it. They also have a midget engine in here. These midget engines sell for pretty good money now. It does not appear to have ever been used. This is an O&R. That was one of the better companies. It's got all the specifications. $67.50 is actually a perfectly decent price, and if it was a larger or more complicated one, it'd be a bargain at that price. This is a little miniature spy camera with its little miniature case. That is just neat. I wonder how much they want for this. I hope it's inexpensive like some of these other things have been. It's got the original film even. 1950s, it's $27.50. That's not a bargain price, but because it has everything, it may still be a buyable price. I'm gonna have to look into it. Well, this is an example where something I always thought is cool is caught up in the marketplace because the marketplace thinks it's a lot cooler than $27 and I need to buy it. And that's great because I like these. I just didn't realize the prices had gone up now. I remember when I was the only one I knew who bought little stuff like this and they're like, why would you buy cheap novelties that were sold in the back of comic books? Well, because they're fun and they look like this. And you, yes, you can take real pictures with these. Well, sometimes when you are shopping in an antique mall, you hit your sweet spot, and this little corner here seems to be mine. Here's my pile that I've gotten out of this corner so far. Sunshine Biscuits by the Loose Wiles Company. This one's nice because it has the whole thing, including the cardboard box. They'd come into the general store in these boxes, they'd take the lid off the box, and then the covers were so that when you open it up, you have this nice display instead of just a cardboard box on the counter. That's why you see these separate a lot, is because they were not actually made as part of this unit. It was something to be made to put on boxes as they were sent to the store. And that's why they're collectible by themselves. This price of $55 is what they usually go for just the piece by itself. I'm sure it's worth more with the box. Well, I have to come look at this because it's the centennial of the Kentucky Derby, which is in the 1970s. Fall City, big Louisville beer company then. It's $50. Now, that's probably about full value, but it is 20% off. And because of where I sell, it might go for more. So I need to do a little investigating. Well, I did my investigation, and these actually sell pretty cheaply on eBay. So that is pretty much full value, but that's good to know. I might pick one up off of eBay and put it in Kentucky where it belongs. It may be that this is just too specific to a region, and these would have been spread out everywhere by people who came from far away to go to the derbies. Monroe shock absorbers. This would have been a big metal can like an oil barrel, but this would have been made for a service garage in the 1970s to use as a trash can or whatever. These are big old hand hammered circa 1900 and irons. Priced at $1.99 for the set. Ohio has it all. This will sell the best here of course, but it's Genesee beer which came from Rochester, New York. I'm sure they weren't telling the people in Rochester that Ohio had it all, but there's another version of that. Well this is a nice and more organized and more Spartan display back here. I really like this counter topper. This would have been where whether you had a cash register or not. You had a lap desk here and you could store things underneath. That's for the Brownie Bullet camera. $500, they show it as a spool cabinet. Let's see if it has advertising for spools on the back side. It doesn't specifically. I think it could have been used for any number of things in a store. Here's another neat old oak cabinet. This one is actually an old wooden cash register from 1892 where you would have the forms that came out the top there and you would write everything and then make the receipt there's the 1892 patent dates you can see the oak is American oak from that time there's where the cash went and then in here apparently there's some 
trick to this, probably a button that you push or something that releases this drawer and that's where the big money would have gone. If you're liking this video, please do click like and let us know, send us a comment. Uh, we do have memberships. Members get priority response to comments, but we do try to get to everybody's comments eventually. Uh, they are meaningful to us and we try to get to ones where people are asking questions as fast as we can. Uh, we do have a lot of subscribers now, so it's a little hard to keep up with, but please keep going because we, act, we seriously do want to hear from you. It's so nice forming this ever-growing vintage and antique community and so exciting to be sharing this information with all of you. Royal Dalton figures have definitely come down in value. They made a whole lot of certain ones. They didn't make as many of the lobster men though and he is priced at $35. That does not seem like a bad price. Neither does $25 on this 1950s Kodak wooden crate. The wife can throw out more with a scoop than a man can bring in with a shovel. Spoon rest $8, Japanese from the 50s. My mother would have definitely disagreed with that sentiment. My dad could definitely bring a lot of stuff. This was a clever thing we used to see. This is just an old advertising ashtray for a car wash, but they would use the phone dial and then put their number in the phone dial so that you knew where to call to get your services. I'm not sure why you would have to call ahead for a five minute car wash though. And here we've got a whole rack 20% off of various advertising beer trays. Falstaff is a fairly common one. Kohler beer from Erie, Pennsylvania is a little scarcer and these are in good condition. Peels you see fairly often. That's a little lighter weight, so a little newer. A lot of these were done by Continental Can Company that ended up merging with Hazel Atlas Glass. Lucky Lager is cool. This one is from Lucky Lager Brewing Company was San Francisco, Los Angeles, but also Vancouver, Washington. And this is 45, so 36. At this price, there isn't enough money for me to make money on it, but it's a neat piece anyway. Okay, we're rounding our last aisle here. This is an interesting satin green apple paperweight from one of the West Virginia companies, $20. I don't really recognize the color, so I don't think that's one of our larger companies. It might be a smaller one like a Kanawa or a Kempel or perhaps Bischoff. Here's Fenton's Vasa Marina. I had a piece like this at the show, but the pink and green is something you don't see as often. There's two clocks. The one on the left is the Favrine, which is sort of like a blue orine like Stuben did in the early 1900s. This clock is a later production, of course. The bigger of the turquoise Samsonite cases might be hard to clean up because it had tape on it for a long time and this rubber and the rubberized surface do tend to get sticky if they're stored in heat. However, the little vanity case here, like I say about the rubber starting to kind of deteriorate in heat, I think this handle will clean up. It doesn't seem to have affected the surface, which is the most important part. Let's see what the inside looks like. It looks reasonably clean and I think could be cleaned out pretty well. And it's only $10 and this is a good color. And people are liking these little valises again. So I think for $10, this will have to come with me as long as the condition is pretty good overall. And it seems like it is. David Winter Cottages were made in the late 1980s originally in England. And they are cast, it is a Ceramic bisque cast and hand painted and you see prices anywhere from $24 to $45 on these. There's the marks. This one's a 1996. This one's actually signed by David Winter. These were quite collectible when they were new and there are people starting to be interested again and there's a really wide variety. You see they did some that seem sort of Christmas oriented and this one would have been a dealer display in a store. Uh, let's see, Rochester Castle's 125 in the dealer display which would be a scarcer piece to find. There are definitely people collecting these again. The prices are not as high as they once were, but if you are looking for additions to your collection or you're looking for something new to collect or something to find out in reseller land, these are good to look for. Here's a neat old croquet set. This is how they originally would have been presented. They would have had everything in a case that you opened up rather than the stand that you just carried with you. This little guy is Morton's Pottery and he is a bank and he is the Mac Bulldog, or at least he's sure a fearsome looking bulldog. 
Well, Marietta, Ohio is a very charming town. It has a great history. They're very interested in preserving that history. There's lots of fun little places to go, interesting things to see, and I will definitely be back here because I feel like I barely scratched the surface, even though I spent four or five days here with the Glass Collectors Convention. Thank you very much for me. I am George the Antique Nomad. I am so glad to bring these things to you, and I will see you again somewhere soon in the fun world of antique and vintage collecting. Bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!